Grades. Everyone hates grades because grades create pressure. You know, you go to college or high school and you're in a classroom and you have to do homework, you have to take tests, and it is all about the grades. I don't care what anyone says, when you're a student and you're taking a class, you want to get a good grade. Some people think that grades can actually hinder learning because people tend to focus on their grades. I know when I'm taking a class, if I'm working on the homework, I feel like I'm doing it for my grade and I'm not really doing it to learn. And I think that's a really common feeling. Instead of doing homework, you want to study other math that's more interesting or more fun simply for the sake of learning, like you would during self-study. But you can't do that because the grades are there. Some people argue that grades actually help learning because they force you to learn subjects that you normally wouldn't want to learn. As an example, if you're taking, say, an abstract algebra class, you might have to prove the division algorithm, which is not a difficult proof, but it does take some time to go through and learn, and to reproduce it is going to take, you know, a serious amount of effort. In any case, they're here. We have grades. They're a way of measuring progress. There needs to be some way to measure how people do in a class. You know, are, are people actually learning the material that is being taught? And grades is the way that society does that. So why do they matter? What is the real reason that grades actually matter? There's actually two reasons that grades matter. The first being the most obvious, and the second probably not so obvious to most people. Let's talk about the first reason grades matter, and that's because they're grades. They're part of your GPA. When you take a class and you get a C, a D, an F, or maybe an A or a B, it goes on your transcript, and I'm pretty sure that that technically can't get erased. Even if you use what's called grade forgiveness, that's something that some schools have to where if you get like a D or an F, you can actually retake the class and get a better grade. Different schools have different policies, but I'm pretty sure they don't actually erase the grade from your transcripts. Instead, they put a symbol next to it or they cross it out, and then they calculate your GPA only with the new grade. In some cases, I've heard that if you take those grades and you transfer to a different school, that the grade forgiveness might not transfer. Depends on schools. These are just things I've heard. In any case, your GPA matters. It's with you forever. And if you do get a degree, like a four-year degree, at the end of your four-year degree, you have an overall GPA. And that GPA is part of your degree. You know, when you apply for jobs, if you don't have a lot of experience, you put down your bachelor's degree and you put down your GPA. It matters. So they really, really do matter in that extent. They also matter for scholarships. If you've ever tried to get a scholarship, they always ask you for your GPA. They might want some type of, you know, letter of reference or some type of letter that you have to write, but they matter. Believe me, I have been on those committees. I have been one of those people who makes the small decision to give just a little bit of money to some random people. And we have to look at grades. It's just how society is built. Grades matter immensely for scholarships. And it is unfortunate. It really is that it is like the supreme measure of a person's intellect while they're in college is this notion of grades. I mean, I have seen students who are brilliant and they take a certain class with maybe a certain teacher and they had a bad semester and they get a bad grade and it hurts them. I have seen it hurt them and it is really sad and really unfortunate because these are brilliant people. And the students I'm talking about, they're specific ones, they're actually doing really well right now. <laughs> so everything worked out. They've graduated. They have great jobs, you know, so things do work out. So if you have a bad grade, don't feel like it's the end of the world. It's just, it's just one grade. Okay, now let's talk about the other reason that grades matter because I think most people don't really think about this. The second reason grades matter is because they give you a sense of accomplishment and they show that you can do something. So they show you and they show other people that you're able to accomplish something. 
A lot of employers and famous people always say, oh, a college degree just really shows that, you know, you're able to work hard and you're able to learn and you're reasonably intelligent. And I think that's pretty accurate. You know, when you apply for a job that requires, say, a bachelor's degree or a master's degree, they mainly look at your experience and they also do look at your grades, but they really want that degree. That degree, which is a result of <laughs> good grades, shows that you're able to finish something. It also shows you that you're able to do it. I think that's a big one that a lot of people don't think about. If you take a class and you get an A, it feels really good. If you get an A+, it feels even better. And A pluses are very, very rare. I think my greatest A plus was in a graduate level abstract algebra class. There was two A pluses in that class and I was one of them. I still feel good about it today. But I think I think I only had one other A+. I don't really remember. I think I had two, though. But that was the one that really, really stuck with me. You know, I, I took the second part of the abstract algebra course, and I ended up with an A. I did not deserve an A+, by any means. I had a few bad assignments. So having that, having that good grade shows you that you can accomplish things, and it makes you feel good. And when you're successful... It gives you confidence and it allows you to continue to be successful. I want to end this video with a warning. I had a teacher once, brilliant, brilliant professor, probably the best professor I ever had. And he would always say to focus on learning and not focus on grades. And he was right. I mean, this guy won the Putnam twice. The Putnam is this really, really big uh, mathematics competition. It's extremely difficult. Putnam level questions are very, very hard. And I almost competed in the Putnam, but I am not a Putnam person. No, no, no. In any case, this guy won it twice as an undergrad and brilliant mathematician. And he always would say, focus on learning, right? Focus on learning. And when I got to grad school, I remember his words and I was thinking, oh, I really wish I would have worked harder or paid more attention when I was learning about rings or when I was learning about integrability. You know, I really wish I would have focused more on that class or I wish I would have spent more time really trying to, you know, nail down those topics that I didn't really like, but I was forced to do because of grades. So focus on learning. And I think that will, in the end, result in a pretty decent grade. At the same time, don't be one of those people who says, oh, I focus on learning, and then you go get a bad grade. No, no, no. You got to find a balance, right? Because remember, grades matter. That's what this video is about. So make sure you study, do your best, and try to do the best you can. And remember, if you don't get a good grade one time, it's okay. Everyone has a couple bad grades. Good luck. Go do some math.